Hello, everyone. My name is Matt. I'm 18 years old, and I'm the CEO at Beam. I founded my first startup along with my co-founder, James, when we were just 14 years old. It's called MC Pro Hosting, and it's one of the world's largest game server providers. We've hosted hundreds of thousands of game servers, thrown conventions for thousands of gamers, and even ran our own YouTube MCN. But that's not what I'm here to tell you about. I'm here to tell you about something even bigger. Every month, hundreds of millions of people watch other people playing video games on sites like Twitch and YouTube. And you might wonder why people spend countless hours watching other people play video games. Some do it to get tips and improve their own gameplay. Others just want to see great gamers doing their stuff. But a surprising number of viewers watch stream gameplay for the social experience. You see, massive communities are formed around games. And live streams provide a central place for those communities to come together and experience the game from another perspective. But if you spend enough time in those communities and the chat logs that accompany them, you start to notice a pattern. You see, gaming isn't like pro sports, where viewers could never dream of playing with their heroes on the field. Instead, most viewers are avid players themselves, and their comments reflect that. They're trying like crazy to participate in gameplay, making suggestions and practically reaching for the controls themselves. But traditional platforms don't provide any way for viewers to participate in gameplay. And when you have a chat room with thousands of people in it, it's virtually impossible to, to take viewers' suggestions into account. To make both of those things worse, since traditional platforms were built for esports, there's a 10 to 20 second delay between when the streamer says or does something and when their viewers see it, making it all but impossible to engage with their audience. And keeping those viewers engaged is how streamers make their money. Streamers can charge an optional subscription fee where their most loyal fans can pay a small, say, $5 a month fee to support the broadcaster and get ad-free viewing on the channel. So streamers are leaving big money on the table when they're unable to engage their audience, but more importantly, they lose the interest of their fans. And Beam solves that problem. We've developed a live streaming platform from the ground up that allows viewers to interact with the games that streamers are playing. So instead of sitting idle, we as viewers get to go in and do things like changing the streamer's weapon, spawning enemies for them to fight, and even controlling the environment around them in the game, all in real time. And I'd love to give you a demo. So let's jump over to the demo computer real quick. This is Beam. On the right-hand side, we've got a featured stream going on. We'll get back to that in a second. Over on the left, we've got some navigation, where we as a new user can go and set up our own broadcast. But in this case, we're going to browse some channels. So let's go ahead and do that. Here we can see a bunch of people that are currently live on Beam. Let's hover over one of them, and we can view a live video preview of what's going on in their broadcast. We can also filter by game on the left-hand side. So if we just want to see, say, Minecraft content, we can do that. But let's go ahead and jump in that Uplay stream there, and we'll show you the first type of stream gameplay on Beam. This is what we call an autonomous stream. So there's no streamer actually hosting this. What's going on is a member of our community has put up our game, in this case it's Zelda, and they're allowing all of their viewers to play the game together as the main character. Beam takes in all of their input, so James is going around playing the game as though he were the only person playing this. But we've actually got, uh, in this case, like 40 people watching and interacting with this content. So Beam takes all of their inputs, and we try to make sense for what their intentions are. We do a bunch of fancy math, and then we provide that data back as a stream to developers to drive interactions within the games. For those of you that saw Twitch Play's Pokemon, it's similar to that, but 10 times better, and there's virtually no delay. And we couldn't be more excited about taking this technology and applying it with streamers as hosts. So let's jump back over to the Browse page real quick. We're going to go into one of our favorite broadcaster streams. His name is Sat. Let's see, can we get in there? Is he not online? OK. We're, OK, so we'll go in. Let's see. OK, cool. Well, we found Sat. Cool, all right. So Sat has put buttons underneath his stream that we can use as viewers to go in and control actions within his game. So James can go in here and give him a survival kit. So boom, he's got some resources that he can use to help him win. Do we have audio on this? That might be a good thing. Where's the Turn that up a little bit. So we can also we make go? things a little bit more interesting for him. So let's spawn some zombies to, uh, to make things a little bit more interesting. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> so whoa. you can see how Beam makes it possible for viewers to get involved with streamers' gameplay. And what's awesome is that this technology can be used with virtually any game. Let's jump back to the slides, and we'll talk a little bit more about how this works. Cool. Let's get past that. So developers from the community can use our interactive SDK to add uh, joysticks, tactile buttons, and even on-stream controls, and then pair those controls back up to the games with as few as 25 lines of code. So we'll go forward, and we have a screenshot of our interactive control editor here. And we couldn't be more proud of our audience interaction model and publisher SDK 
but there's some deeper tech that's worth talking about here as well. Like we mentioned earlier, traditional platforms have a 10 to 20 second delay between when you perform an action in game on, and when you see that happen as a viewer. And that's fine if you're watching an esports tournament, but it's virtually impossible to help a streamer win a final boss fight if you can't see what impact you're having on the game. Our team of 17 world class engineers have spent the past year developing a streaming stack that's capable of delivering video to thousands of viewers with just two tenths of a second of stream delay. That's 50 to 100 times faster than traditional platforms. We launched a beta roughly 90 days ago, and today over 100,000 people watch stream content on Beam every single month. And what's even more exciting is that an average viewer watches nearly three hours of content each session. So that's a little background on Beam, but there's one more thing that I couldn't be more excited to tell you about. As of right now, our broadcast platform is officially an open beta, so any broadcaster can go to Beam.pro and stream truly interactive content with gaming's first low latency streaming stack. I'm Matt, and we're Beam. Thanks for playing. All right, judges, uh, anyone here a gamer or an esports fan who wants to kick us off? <laughs> All right, I'll, okay, go ahead, yeah. How do you compare against Mob Crush? Yeah, so Mob Crush is primarily mobile gaming. So they're focused on taking what Twitch does and bringing it to phones. We're not super focused on mobile at the moment. We're really focused on taking gaming communities that are really passionate about interaction and giving them the tools that they need to engage their audience in the live stream. So it's a little bit of a different focus. Can you do mobile also? We can, yeah. So we have iOS and Android apps that allow you to watch streams, as well as uh, Kindle Fire as well. Um, we're working on streaming native from Android. That's going to be something that we're launching in about six months. Right now, we're really focused on desktop because that's where we think the most money is really, quite frankly, early on. Um, later on, of course, we'll expand to larger markets. Yeah. Great job with your presentation. I thought you spoke fantastically. Thank you. Uh, great story. If you look at the competitive landscape, are you trying to take users and switch them over to your platform, or do you think you're a, a, a nice and on top of the existing platform? We think it's a mix of both, right? So we've had people that have come over from Twitch. So two examples, Tango Tech and Impulse. There's some of Twitch's top Minecraft casters that have actually jumped over to our platform because they're able to interact with their audience more. And ultimately, it means more money for them, right, because of subscriptions and such. So there's going to be people that come over naturally. We want to be really careful because there's awesome communities that are being built on Twitch. And they, und they, have, a, they have an awesome community, undeniably, right? So we don't want to go in and act like we're poaching people or like stealing their partners or things like that. We don't think that's a super healthy way to build a business. But, I mean, people will come over undeniably, right? You keep using the word business. How much of this right. is about community instead of business? And is there a specific game that you think is out there, a, maybe a newer game that you can own that community and then build around from there? Yeah, we think it's all about starting with communities, right? We think the business is built around communities with communities being at the center. So providing the communities with the tools that they need to support their own broadcast, and of course we take a percentage of that ad revenue and subscription revenue to help support our, you know, run the platform, right? Um, so you asked about games. We're actually launching some pretty exciting game integrations in the next couple of months. I can't talk about them today, unfortunately. You can. No one's listening. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I'd love to talk about them, but unfortunately, it's two or three months down the road. So we're, we're working on some first party integrations. So, um, so congrats on all the traction, 100,000 monthly actives. That's great. Can you explain a little bit about how you seeded the platform, how you got those initial streamers and Absolutely. watchers? So initially, it was almost entire, in fact, Till today, it's almost entirely word of mouth, right? So people tweet their broadcast. You have some natural viral traction. We seeded it really early on with a lot of our connections from the MC Pro business, so the game server hosting company that we started. We have connections with nearly all of the top gaming content creators, right? So we've worked with guys like Skydust Minecraft, and those guys are actually who gave us like the original concept for this. That's where we kind of got inspired to make this. So people like that helped us out really early on, you know, making tweets. You know, in some in some cases, some of them even broadcasted on the platform. Um, and bringing more of them on is going to be a priority over the course of the next couple months for us. So, and yeah. Just to build on that, um, how are you thinking of kind of spreading the word beyond the initial um, launch? Yeah. So like we mentioned, a lot of it happens naturally on its own because the, the streamers want to promote their own broadcast. So that's great for us um, because we don't have to spend as much effort on that as we, uh, as we would have to otherwise if they didn't. A lot of our promotion goes around kind of community building, right? So taking communities that are doing really well and highlighting them on Twitter, getting, it's all about Twitter. So advertising on Twitter, our own Twitter account has a lot of organic traffic going towards it. 
focusing on those kind of community based platforms for advertising and such. Also, of course, brand integration deals with large casters is the obvious one. Getting people streaming on the platform. Um, for example, guys that have been making YouTube videos for a long time, this is a great opportunity for them to go and make their, to engage with their audience, right? Great, thanks. So. Maybe one more question. How do you get the game developers to care? You have a relatively small audience today. Um, and so why are they going to bother to let you do the integrations necessary? So the great thing is starting off, oh gosh, Mike. So the great thing is starting off, we don't actually have to worry too much about that because almost all games are moddable. So Minecraft is a great example, and we're actually going to see a lot of our early users there uh, because we came from that background, right? MC Crosting was a Minecraft hosting server business. Um, so we can do Minecraft integrations early on. We've actually seen a lot of interesting publisher interests um, from a couple, like I said, can't talk about it yet. But what they're really excited about is the fact that they're able to sell copies of their games because viewers get to, it's almost like a review system for games. Instead of watching you know, a video trailer that someone puts up, someone's going to go and watch a live stream nowadays. It's like the, the next uh, evolution of reviews or uh, really trailer videos. And so we're working on deals with those first party publishers where they can go and put uh, buttons and pr working with the casters to have buttons where viewers can buy the game right on the site. And that's just kind of a natural thing. Everyone in the ecosystem benefits from that, really. So, so if you can't tell us the publisher that's, that you're about to announce, can yeah. you give us like a hint? Like, what are their initials? <laughs> I, can't, I can't do that. <laughs> um, let's just say there's some great community based party games that uh, people are interested in that, that we're working on. So. And, and is that really what you're going? I mean, Minecraft, right? There's a community that exists online. There's a community around Dota, all the games that you put up there. Is there another set of games that are almost left on the table and, and make for a better communal play uh, than just a viewing audience? So what's really exciting is that people are developing games to be used in this way, like ground up games, games like Streamline that you know is they're working with Twitch to try and do things, but you know we're in talks with them. I can say that much, and they're really excited. So games that are built, like Choice Chamber, Streamline, to name a couple, that are actually built from the ground up with streamer viewer interaction or uh, integration in mind is something that we're really excited about and I think is something that's going to be huge within the course of the next three to five years. Awesome. Well, we are out of time. Let's give it up one more time for Beam. Thank you.